Hello YouTube land, it's Debbie from the Canadian Crotch Editor. Today is Sunday, March 28th. <laughs> Pardon the appearance, it's pajama day and excuse the lighting. I've got all the lights on as bright as they'll go because uh, outside it's dark and dreary. I think we saw the sun for like five minutes today. It's been raining and yucky and now, now the wind is picking up. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I noticed that it's been a little while since I've been on, so I figured I'd get on here and show you the, some of the stuff that I've been making. I'm gonna try to condense this, condense this fairly quickly and get it under 30 minutes. So we'll get right into it. Now, the first item is a finished item, and I'm probably wearing the wrong clothes underneath this. I'm sure it will look better with another outfit, but I'm not about to change. So uh, this has been in my queue to do for quite a while. It is called the Lacy Spring Cardigan by Century Box Designs. It is beautiful and it is well written. It is a paid for pattern, but it's free on her blog and there is a YouTube tutorial. So yay, yay, yay. I'm gonna leave the link for all three down below. Now it is a, like I said, it's a beautiful pattern. She does a great job designing it. It's great. And there's no sewing. No sewing. You do have to seam, which you could, I guess the back, you could sew it, but um, I did a slip stitch, so no sewing whatsoever. I did make a mistake though. So the yarn that she's using is a Sugarbush Cabot, which is 70% Pima cotton and 30% linen. It's a heavier yarn, right? Like uh, the finished product would be heavier. I used what I had. I had Peyton's Canadiana, which is 100% acrylic, I believe. Uh, I believe hers, actually, I, I believe the yarn that she's using might be a number three. Yeah, number three cotton linen blend. This is a four, but I figured this is light. So it's like a heavy three or a light four. I figured I could do it. No, no, I'm kind of... I'm happy with the results. I love the pattern, love the design. Pattern is great. But I think I used the wrong choice of yarn only because it doesn't, doesn't lay well. So yeah, this was Canadian, uh, Canadian, uh, Peyton's Canadiana and the color is toasty gray. I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna show you, okay? Let's push this back. Yes, so this is literally two panels the sleeves and this is all it's all there's no seams look at that no seams whatsoever love that uh what i don't like is okay i, I guess you can't see it i'm gonna try to push back a little uh i guess you guys can i'm not sure if you can see it it puckers here and that is not the pattern that is the yarn. Uh, I did block it, uh, but it's pulling back on itself. But I love this yarn. I don't care. I've made many things with Peyton's Canadiana. So uh, it doesn't look exactly like hers because it's not laying properly, but I don't care. I love this thing so much. And I think I'm going to make it another one. I'm going to find some cotton. Uh, yarn number three cotton and make it out of that. I think I might even have some um, Yes It is all be forewarned. It's a lot of troubles It is such a nice pattern. I'm so happy and I'm definitely gonna gonna uh, Do it again Definitely so that's number one. Sorry. I'm a little warm. So I'm gonna take this off I got that done. I highly recommend that. And, and you might actually see another one of those fairly soon out of me. The other thing that I got done, finally got Oscars. I don't know if you've been here a while. I said that I have two sets of beds for my dogs, one here in the living room, one in the bedroom. And Oscar doesn't have a blanket in his bed in uh, the bedroom. So I finally got it done. Now this, it's a little bigger than his bed, so I have to actually fold it in half. Because this started as a wheelchair blanket. And I wanted to use up these three cakes. I had two cakes, they're all three are Yarn B Sugar Wheels. 
and two of the colors are Have It Soar Bay and one color is Sunnyside Swirl. And I wanted to combine them. I did color control, so I did a lot of cutting, a lot of sewing in events. It started out, like I said, I was gonna use it for a wheelchair blanket, but the yarn's not that nice, honestly. And I've even washed this, and it's still kind of stiff. This is the first Hobby Lobby yarn that I'm disappointed with. I that never thought that was gonna happen. I was not, and even actually, so the Have It Sorbet, which is, uh, it started, wait, 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 wait. The Have It Sorbet, this one, is um, stiff, 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 and then the sunny side one, which is I think here, that's softer, still not very soft, but softer than this one. So even between the same line and the same cakes, just different colors, they feel differently. So I did wash it, and like I said, it's, it is the size for a wheelchair uh, blanket, um, but I don't feel comfortable giving it because it is very stiff. It is coarse, almost like it's, like a pla coated in plastic. So my dog doesn't mind. So I washed it and I folded it. Uh, actually, I folded it more in quarters. That's how small his bed is. So that is what he sleeps on now. This size. <laughs> anyway, so I did get that done. It's just a corner to corner, really easy. And how this came about, a friend of mine, Wendy, um, she never did a corner to corner, so I did a little video clip and actually shared it with someone else as well. Uh, but I made it for Wendy and uh, just did a little video clip and she, I sent it to her and hopefully soon she'll be able to do it. And, and then I, when I was doing the video, I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I haven't done a C2C in a while. If you hear noise, hubby's obviously watching some war movie. Okay, so I did that, got that done. What else have I got done? Uh, what else can I talk about? Okay, so another thing, another friend came a few last week and she's a nurse. Um, maybe I should go tell him to turn it down. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna listen to it before I post it and we'll, hopefully it's not too bad. A friend of mine came to visit for a couple of days. Like I said, it's the province is opening up so a lot of my girlfriends who, uh, you know, I missed so much. Anyway, she came and she's a nurse. She's a nurse in uh, the Oshawa Hospital. All of you Ontarians know what the Oshawa, uh, Osh where Oshawa is. Anyway, she's a nurse, uh, she's an emergency nurse, but she also teaches nursing. And she teaches nursing in the neonatal unit at the hospital. And we were talking and she was telling me that in the neonatal unit, now I'm gonna to try to do this without crying because I had a really hard time and I will show you some pictures that she sent me. None of the babies, none of the babies. Uh, they have a lot of newborn or prenatal blankets and uh, um, hats, like for the, for the preemies, uh, not prenatal, uh, premature. What they don't have a lot of is for the angel babies. And when she was telling me what an angel baby was, I was bawling, bawling. So basically they needed hats and what the nurses do, an angel baby is one who does not survive. They are so small, they literally fit in the palm of the nurse's hands. And when the baby passes on, the nurses, they have a local woodworker that has donated these beautifully made wooden boxes. So while the baby is alive, the nurses put little hats on and blankets, take photos, they take uh, prints of the baby, uh, and then these knitted and crocheted hearts, like a bigger heart, and then like a cord attached to a smaller heart uh, to represent the bond, the bond between the mom and the baby, and they they put everything once the baby passes. They put everything in this keepsake box uh, for the mom, 
And then when the parents are ready to come back, they will pick up everything. Anyway, um, so they are short on those, the tiny little, uh, the really preemie baby. They're short on the hats and the blankets. So anyway, she's trying to explain to me how big uh, it is. And she said, when I get back to work, I'll send you some pictures. So she did, she went back to work. And this is where I'll put in the pictures of the sizes that she sent me. So she sent me a picture of her hand on something like that, that size. So I did a little research and angel baby sizes are, uh, the blankets are eight to nine inches. Some of these are a little bigger. They're all, are all different sizes. So they're like this. Um, so this is just a crocheted granny with a shell border. And um, uh, hold on a second, I'm gonna say. Sorry about that. The noise was a little distracting, so uh, I just asked him to put it down a little bit. And being the great guy that he is, he did. Um, okay, so where was I? I was talking about the blankets. So this one, most of these, this one was done with some scraps that I had. And all of these have to be still washed, so that's one. Um, and then, let's see, this one, so I also did, I didn't have a lot of baby, like this is not really traditionally baby colors. And they want, she specifically wanted, uh, they wanted um, baby colors. And another thing that she said to me was the hearts that they asked for, they asked that they not be red. So I'm not using any color of red. And the re and I asked her like why? And she said, because when those babies are born, they are very close to the color red. So they don't want colors to remind the moms of that. Ugh. Anyway, so I did put it in order at Michael's. I had ordered um, some of their new stuff that I never had. And I ordered two balls, one in this color and one in a pink of the Little Treasures. I love this. I think they only had a couple of colors in this, but this particular, not maybe not the color like sequence because it does come out, I'll show you what it comes out. There's a pattern to it. But this yarn, I want in solid colors. They don't have them in solid colors, unless it's called something else. I don't know, but I would really love to make something for myself out of this yarn. I love it. So this yarn is Loops and Threads Little Treasures. You get 557 yards um, in this one ball. It is a number three light and Canadian retails for $11.99 up here. And this one is called Maritime Blue. I seriously, if anybody knows if this particular yarn is called something else but in solid colors let me know which reminds me i mean michael's i'm a little disappointed with them uh lately i had put in an order and it took weeks to get they'd given it to a delivery company who refused to deliver it they're saying we're not going out there I'm like what do you mean why would you take my order if you can't deliver it so they were they wanted us to drive to the delivery company's depot which is over an hour away i'm like well then what am i paying delivery for anyway i bitched and complained and they delivered it well they didn't deliver it to me they delivered it to the local post office which the only reason the postmaster accepted is because he knows us they don't normally accept shipments like from i won't say what company it is but anyway, he accepted it as a favor to us, besides the point. So like I said, I ordered this blue and a pink one. I'm gonna be working with the pink one. So you'll see lots of little preemie stuff, pre-preemie stuff. So that, uh, and then I also put in, an, I ordered uh, a blue, a baby blue and a this light green one. And this one is Baby Delight, 557. Uh, oh, what did I, did I tell you what this was? Did I tell you what the first one, the uh, yarn was? I would tell you if I knew. Huh. Did I tell you? No, it's 100% acrylic, but it's very, very smooth, like a shiny. 
And then this one I believe is also 100% acrylic. That's what I was looking for. Uh, oh, 70% acrylic, 30% polyamide, and it's a number three light, 557, and I believe this one's 11.99 regular retail as well. Uh, also very nice to work with, really nice. Like in 557, so even if you paid full price, $12, and you get three of them, that's, you know, 30 bucks for, or $36 for a sweater, like for an adult sweater. Not bad, they have more colors of this. I stuck to the baby colors. And then I also got this one. Uh, I think this one's a number, no, this one says a number four, but uh, it's slightly thicker than the other ones, not much. And this is called Baby Rainbow. And again, I stuck to, and it says limited time only. It feels buttery. It feels like uh, Lion Brands, feels like butter, but a little thinner. Um, which I love. And this, you get 503 yards for $12, 11.99. dollars um, And I got the color, what color is this? I don't even know. Lavender. Now, I think I've mentioned before, I, I have some issues with, um, I'm not gonna get into details, but needless to say, my hands are very much um, cracked and, and the skin pops open. So all that just catches on this yarn. But it, let me tell you, it is soft, but it does catch. So, ended up getting all that. So the, for, that's why I want to show you that, because they're all baby colors. So the first one, I found this online. It's called How to Crochet a Blanket Stitch. I'll leave the link for that. And then, so I just did that and uh, and it's funny because it reminds me of a stitch and I cannot remember what it is. It reminds me very much of a, a stitch that I can't remember. Anyway, so I did one of these, buttery. Uh, and then I did the linen stitch in that other yarn. And see, this is what I was telling you about. This creates that, uh, a, a pattern. I'm sure if it was, uh, I think I did knit with it, yeah. Um, yeah, so I made that and then I made another granny out of uh, the Baby Delight. This one's just a granny, very soft. And then I did the lemon peel stitch. This one's slightly bigger, the lemon peel stitch. And then I knitted one. And I don't think I'm gonna put this one in there because as I this was using the same uh, yarn leftovers like it was a cake it was like a one-third of a cake or something and I can't remember what what it was and so I just I made a crocheted one and then I made a knitted one and I don't think I'm gonna put it in because if you look at it it not to sound more but it kind of looks like blood spatter so I don't think I'm gonna put this one in but I did knit it and I was not because I'm such a newbie knitter my edges are not always very clean so I just put a crocheted like edge over around it. But I don't think I'm gonna give this one over. I don't know. Oh. I don't know, it's such a, it, I've been bawling like crazy. And then I wanted to make some little hats. So she sent me a picture, I'll, I'll put it here, of the size of the hat. And that basically, using three fingers. That is how small. Oh my God. I've tried doing this before, I can't do it without crying. This is how small uh, the hats have to be. Now this is a crochet, you know, a uh, single crochet in the back loop and you just make the ribbing and then you just cinch the top. And this is good. And I'm gonna tell you something that she told me and I <laughs> hope to God I don't ball my eyes out. She said this is good, but not great. And the reason for that is there's not much stretch. And they need stretch because these little babies, they're, the bones are not fully formed and the nurses have to be able to stretch it without crushing skulls, getting, you know. Oh, I'm having a really hard time with this right now, I'm so sorry. 
Anyway, so I will put this one in, but it doesn't have a lot of stretch. So I decided to knit it. Um, a while ago, uh, uh, a fellow family member sent me a pattern for a, a hat that she uses all the time. She calls it Ed's favorite hat. It's her husband's favorite hat. And it's knitted flat and then you seam it. And look at the stretch on this. Now this, right? They, the nurses can work with this. And the only thing is there's a seam. Um, she said it wasn't gonna be a problem, so I might make a few more of these. Um, the, the reason that I want it to flat is because the only way to get such a small circumference, I mean, yes, you can do magic loop, but I, uh, the best way I think is do, using DPNs, and I'm not proficient at DPNs, but I'm gonna show you something in a minute. So I knitted it flat, uh, but it does have a seam. So that's cute. Look at how small this is. Anyway, uh, so I did try the DPNs and I made this one. And this is just a little, it, like I think it was like three rows of ribbing and then just knit, 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 no seam. I'm not crazy about the join, so I'm gonna have to to um, do a better better decreases at the top. So I did that. Now I did the DPNs. Now you know, you all know what DPNs look. This is knitted, by the way. Uh, this is what a typical DPN looks like. I struggle with the size, like how big they are. And I was at the dollar store. Oh God, last summer, and I found this for $2. And it is, they are DPNs because they have the size on there. I'm not gonna be able to try to show you. This is a size three millimeter. But look at this. I paid $2 for five of them. Look, and I find this so much easier to work with. I think I bought a couple of them, a couple of different sizes. I just don't know where the other ones are. I just happened to come across these ones and I'm like, oh, these are the perfect size and they work amazing because you're working with such small circumference, like it's small yarn, small amount of stitches. So I love these. This is definitely going to, I wish I could find more of this size. I don't even know what size they are, but they're tiny and short. It's the length that I have an issue with. Like these to me feel very awkward and these to me feel much more natural. So I'll keep practicing on those. So these are all going to go to my friend for the Oshawa Hospital. Now, if this is something that you want, I'm sure that the Oshawa Hospital is not alone in being short on these pre-preemies, you know, like the angel baby stuff. Um, if you want to reach out to the neonatal unit uh, in your local hospital, I am sure that they are short of these because, you know, most people don't make them that small. They make them baby size or even preemie size, which is bigger than this. These are tiny. Anyway, I did that. Um, now, Last finished object is I'm going to talk about my. Uh, oh, what did I do with it? Hmm. I don't have the, my papers here. <laughs> my letter E movie for the movie and stitch uh, mal uh, that uh, Terry over at Yarn Droid Podcast started, and a few, quite a few people are doing it. And my E movie was E T. <laughs> I haven't watched that in so long, like probably, I don't even know, 15 years when I watched it with my kids. And so in there, there was a scene where E.T. was dressed up by itty bitty Drew Barrymore and uh, he was wearing a hat. Uh, and I will find a picture of that and I made it. I'm sorry, I have a ponytail on, so it should be a little lower. But I made the E.T. hat. I even made the crocheted rose. <laughs> is that not adorable? No pattern. This is completely winging it. 
And I guess it doesn't look perfect on me because I have the ponytail, but you get the idea, right? So cute. So there's my E hat, E.T. I've not even picked an F movie yet. I don't even know if I will. I've been pretty busy lately and Easter's coming. The kids are coming up for that. So I don't know if I have uh, time. Now, I'm going to show you a whip and I don't know why I'm even showing you because I'm very, very disappointed. And it's sitting in the corner now. It's in not time out right now. This has also been on my, um, on my uh, to-do list for a while. It's called the Bark Sweater. I believe this is a paid-for pattern. Not 100% sure. By Sidsil Sangild. I'll leave the link below. Anyway, it looks, it's an amazing pattern. I loved doing it. I made the mistake. So they basically there's only, you only have small or large to make. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, small or large. Now I started making it and I loved, like I said, I loved every, it's all front post double crochet, all of it, and stitch and chains. And I know everybody's going, ugh. And honestly, front post double, there's no bad posts. So the, once you start the front posts, they lift themselves up so that the first two rows are the most difficult. After that, the stitches is so the stitches are so raised that you won't have any problem getting under it. And you're not having any back posts to pull that front post back so that when you come back around you have to dig for it. You don't. It's all elevated. You, I can even get my finger in there. Like, easy. But the first two rows, two, three rows, it is. You have to struggle a little bit. But this is it. Now, so I know by the measurements that I needed a small. Um, so I started with the small. So the difference is up here. Uh, you start off small or big or large. And so I went with a small. But then we got to the where you had to split for the sleeve. And I tried it on and it was a little tight here. So I thought, well, if I go with the large, it's just going to hang over me. And the small is tight in the pit. So I, um, I decided, well, you know what? I'm just gonna take one section of the, like, like here, I'll show you. So I took one section like this of a repeat and I just added it, still continuing with the small. And the small fits me here very well, here. Uh, and it fits me in the shoulders. The arm length is great. But now the pit is too low. The problem is I didn't stop early enough to figure it out. So I actually have all this done and one sleeve and the pit, the pit p p essentially comes down to here. <laughs> so now, and I keep mulling and thinking, well, I'll just finish it and see, maybe it won't bother me that much. No, it's bothering me a lot. So I have to pull back this whole sleeve and all this plus that added thing and go back to having the tight pit and we'll go from there. So that's why it's in the corner. I don't want to pull it all out. But I think I'm going to have to because that, I, I, that low pit is going to drive me insane. Anyway, uh, this yarn. So I had a sweater's quantity of this Wims Merino. And I know a lot of people are going to think this is cheap yarn or uh, inexpensive, but it, to my pocketbook, this was pretty pricey. It's $10 a hank. It is number three light and it is 50% fine or fine superwash merino and 50% nylon. I ordered it because it was on sale and blah, blah, and on sale for $10. And when I first got it, I'm like, eh. Eh, not that impressed. It's okay, right? But when I started working with it, oh my goodness. What it turns into is buttery soft. I love this yarn. And so this, this is that Z, a Wims Merino, which is a Z twist for crocheters. I can't tell you 
how, what a joy this was to work with. I didn't want it to stop. So that's kind of like fueling me to pull it back. It'll just give me the opportunity to do it again. Uh, but the yarn is this, the et final product. Like I never would have guessed if somebody let me touch this, I never would have guessed that this was this. That, and I don't know if it's the oils from my hands that transform this yarn or what, but this is just okay. This is luscious. I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, uh, hold on a second. Um, actually, I just got notification that I can show you one more thing that I made. Give me one second. I thought I had it here. One second, I'm gonna cut. The, I have one more FO, and the reason is that I wasn't gonna show it because it was a test, and I was waiting for her to respond. Can I talk about it? Uh, Jennifer over at Crafty Bones has created a hat pattern, and she asked me to test it. And I'm like, absolutely, I'll give it a try. And this is called the Mosaic Granny Beanie. Okay. Now, I don't know what she was saying. Uh, she's not, I'm not sure if, there, if it's gonna be a charged pattern or a free pattern. She says probably free, but you never know, right? Um, anyway, once I get all the details, I will link it down below. But this is it. She suggested to use scraps, which I'm like, yay. Always looking for, look at that. Look at that. Is that how fabulous this is? I'm gonna call it my sunflower, or daisy sunflower hat. Just look at it. These are using scraps. And um, it is fabulous. I don't even know where that seam is. That's how great it is. I really don't know. Watch, as soon as I put it on, I'll notice it. Anyway, I don't know where it is. But, and now I have a ponytail, but look how fabulous fun is this how much fun i love it so much so much now she did oh, what did she say about the sizes she says that she made used a six millimeter and uh i used a five millimeter and then so i started with the five millimeter and at one point she says to go down to size which i, I did i went to a four millimeter it fits like a glove. I'm telling you, I love it. I love it so much. Look at, just look at that. Just look at that. That is a flower. <laughs> I love it. And this, like I said, it's using three colors of scrap, scrap yarn. I love it. Good job, Jennifer. Hopefully she'll be able to release it real soon. Um, anyway, I will leave a link for Crafty Bones down below, and if the pattern is released, I'll leave a link for that as well. If not, you gotta go see Crafty Bones, which by the way, you should be watching her anyway. She's awesome. She does everything. Like, everything. <laughs> She's pretty awesome. Thank you, Jennifer, for asking me. That was so much fun. It was great. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was, uh... Oh, by the way, did I, guys, did I tell you guys, I'm taking an online gardening course. <laughs> No-till gardening. So I guess uh, in this area, there's, uh, the courses are being offered, and but because of COVID, they're all turning online. So I'm doing an online gardening course. I love it, I love it. I'm re learning so much, like lasagna gardening, and oh, just, it's great. So that's been keeping me busy too. Um, anyway. I wanted to talk about two acquisitions that I have. Uh, I don't normally show what I purchase, but in this case, I want to show you because I think they're pretty good deals. Now, the first one is, I put it in order at yeah, ice. And let me see, oh my goodness. Okay, so I put it in order because I wanted to test the theory whether I would get dinged with duties and taxes. So I think that there's a, a monetary level. I think it's $25 and it'll come through without duties and taxes. So I kind of stuck it to that. So this, this package, uh, so American, so the, the yarn was $8.99 and the shipping was nine, sorry, I don't have my glasses, 
$9.95. Shipping was more than the yarn. So that sucks. But let's continue. Uh, so everything cost me $18.94 US. Converted to Canadian, it comes out to $24.56. So that, I got this. Okay, it looks purple, it's not, it's a blue. It's a blue. It's darker. Uh, it's, it's blue, it's not purple. Sorry, Rose. Uh, anyway, but this is, I believe, uh, this is a cotton wool. Uh, 60% merino wool and, uh, no, 66% merino wool and 34% cotton. So a wool, merino cotton, and trust me, this is soft, uh, and it is, I believe, a number three. Um, and it came out to 307 a ball, 307 Canadian, which is like, I don't even know, 270 American. Um, 307 Canadian, and that, so it comes out to fit all these eight balls, um, is 1,520 meters or 1,662 yards. So in this little itty bitty bag, I have enough for a sweater. It's number three, so it's, it's thin, but I have been, I find that I'm gravitating more and more towards that, moving away from the chunky stuff, maybe because of summer, I don't know. Um, so if you think about it, it's $24.56 for a sweater, and it's made out of merino cotton. That's pretty good. And I didn't get dinged any duties and taxes, so that is good. So I just wanted to test that out. I'm very pleased with this. So I think that's what I'll do. And I've gotten away from buying big shipments, you know? Like I, I go online and I put all this stuff in my car and I order a big shipment or whatever. And then I open everything up and the feeling's gone. Like, you know, you know that rush that you're looking for. So don't tell hubby, but what I've started doing is buying small. So every week I'm getting two or three packages, <laughs> which are like two or three times the fun. <laughs> anyway, the other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention was, um, so I was watching Chronically Crochet, Crystal at Chronically Crocheting, and she was talking about the uh, homespun sweater, and I'm like, Oh, now I want a homespun cardigan. I've made homespun cardigan before, but I didn't have any more homespun, so I was like, I really want one. So I went looking for homespun, and I found it, homespun. I think you all know, some of you, Claudia, call it uh, hull spun, and I believe it's 88% acrylic, 12% polyester, made in the USA. And it's eight ounces, so it's a lot, quite a, quite a, where's the yardage? 160 yards, eight ounces, 227 grams. And this color, I have no idea. Waterfall. Okay, I don't know. Sorry, the lighting is really, really bad. But it's a series of blues and, yeah, mostly blues and teals. So, I ordered seven, <laughs> seven balls of this. Now I went looking, and for I'm going to give you a tip for you Canadians. Now I believe they ship all over Canada, but I'm not 100% sure. I know that they, they, they definitely deliver in Ontario. It's a discount store called Lens Mills. Anybody who's been in the Lens Mills knows that they have a very big fabric section and a very big yarn section. Uh, their, their deals are not like even though it's a discount store, it's like a dollar store on steroids. They sell everything. Um, even though it's not, they're not, the prices are cheaper, just not hugely cheaper. But anyway, so I bought seven of these to make my cardigan. And what did I pay? I paid, it came out to $59.25 with the shipping, which comes out to $8.46. Um, a ball. That's including taxes, including shipping, including everything. So it's 60 bucks for my cardigan. But if you go to Michael's, okay, and you 
factor in the price and the tax and the shipping, it would cost me $11.16 per ball. So $8.46 versus $11.16. I know it's not a huge savings, but it's a little bit. It's a little bit. And like I said, they don't carry as much as Michael's and they don't carry a lot of current brand new stuff. But anything out, they carry a lot of a lot of stuff. If you go into their store, they don't carry as much online. But if you go into their store, there's lots, lots of stuff. And probably last year's or the year before that season, but who cares? It's yarn, right? Unless you're, you want to be the current, right? Um, but I was just looking for homespun and yeah, a little bit of savings. So I wanted to bring, if not to all of my Canadian friends, to all of my Ontarian, Ontario friends, uh, check out Lens Mill. I'll leave the link for Lens Mills and uh, they sell everything, but uh, the camera's telling me again, every time, every time telling me not to talk too much. Anyway, check out Lens Mills. I'll leave the link. And like I said, I don't even know if they ship internationally. They might, but it's probably not worth it because it's probably expensive. And I think, I think that is all I have to show you. <laughs> I have no idea when I'm going to be back. Easter's coming. I got my gardening course. I'm teaching myself how to make more and more uh, vegan or vegetarian uh, dishes. I think I mentioned before, I'm trying to be meat free and that's not for ethical reasons because I love meat. It just doesn't like me. <laughs> so I've been trying, so because I love meat, I still have hankerings for the texture of meat or the flavor of meat. Um, so I'm trying to duplicate that with other things. I'm trying to make something called seitan. <laughs> it's a process, let me tell you. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't mastered it yet, but uh, yeah, anyway, now I'm really, really rambling and babbling and I'm going to let you go and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be back in a week or two and yeah, we'll talk soon. <laughs>